Any questions before we begin? Suggestions? Objections? Remember, if this thing blinks, because I'm using it since last semester and it still is not blinking, so it's kind of a phobia for me. If you see this is blinking, let me know. Okay? So, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> first thing first, as usual, I'm going to create, the, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do any coding today at all, but I'm going to open, uh, create the, uh, the uh, um, uh, project anyway. And I do it a few times in class, so you see how it's done, and I want you to, uh, uh, learn how to do it when the time comes, uh, yourself. Um, so I'm going to go create a new project. Empty project. Start from scratch with C++ for Windows. Provide no starting files. So we select that one. We go next. We select uh, the repository. Documents. Let's actually... There should be a PIM to something somewhere. PIM to quick access. There you go. So um, the OOP244, then I'm going to go to the notes, then I'm going to go to NAA, that is you. I'm going to select folder. It's going to be 02 January 11th. So 02 January, January 11th. Okay. And. Uh, Place the solution and project in the same directory. Extremely important to have that one. Create. Three years later, we have our project. Right click, add new item. I'll go prg.cpp. I include IO stream. What does hashtag mean at line one? Uh, it's, you know, uh, do we, we use hashtag to include external files. No, what hashtag means? Nothing to it. What does hashtag mean? Anybody know? Do you know what hashtag means over there? The hashtag at line one. Anybody knows what hashtag means? You don't know? Huh? Comment? <laughs> no, not, no, actually. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so I have news for you. Uh, you are writing two languages in one editor. One is C++ or C, and the other one is the compiler language. Anything with hashtag, you are telling the compiler to do something before compilation. So anything starts with hashtag, you are telling to the compiler, hey, do this before you compile my code. In this case, what am I saying? Include header file before you compile. What is include? To add another file, another library. It's, it's not, it is add, but mm -hmm. it is a better, it literally does something. Can anybody tell call. me? Huh? Call. No, no, I, no calling at all. Call is wrong. Add was better. But, huh? No. Literally copy and paste. Literally, literally, it goes to the directory of the library, opens up I.O. I stream, let me make it bigger, opens up I.O. stream, and literally copies the content, pastes it, and replaces line one with the contents of I.O. stream, and continues. I'll give you an example in two seconds, okay? So, take a look at this. int main, no void in main, return zero. Okay, now I am using the standard stuff, so I'm going to say namespace, oh, using, oh, sorry, not include, using namespace std. Now in here I'm going to say insert into console output hello OOP. 244NAA and add an end line, then say, How are you doing today? And going to new line. 
So essentially, this program of mine includes the I.O. stream, which is, what is a stream? Flow of things, right? Things that come. So a queue that in Tim Hortons is a stream of people going to get coffee. Okay? Right? Any queue is a stream of things. I.O. stream is stream of information coming from input and stream of information going to output. That's why we call it a stream. Are we okay with that? <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> opera voice, I'm losing it. Anyways, we okay with that? So now take a look at this. I'm gonna do something crazy in here. Take a look. And I'm gonna come over here. Let's first stick it over here. In here, I'm gonna go, I don't have to go to header files, but I'm gonna go there anyway. I'm gonna say add a new item, add a utility item, and I'm gonna call, put a text file over here, and I'm gonna call it hoo-hoo.txt. A good for you. Right? And the next thing I'm gonna add over here is new item. This one is gonna be better than that. It's gonna be hee-haw.hoo-hoo. Is that okay for you? Okay, so I have two files over here and I'm adding them. Okay, right? So being there, not there, doesn't make any difference. Header files never take part in compilation app because I didn't add anything. Those are just two files in a source code. They had nothing to do with anything. If I compile and run this, you will see that it actually runs and compiles and says over here, hello, hello, OP244 NAA, how are you doing, right? Are you okay with that? Now please take a look at this. Control X. And I'm gonna go to hee whatever, Control V. And I'm gonna come over here, get the rest of it, Control X, and put it in hoohoo.txt, Control V. You see that? Now I'm gonna go in my main, and I'm gonna say include. What was that one? hee dot who who right and the other one is what include who who dot txt right so what did i oh no semicolon so what did i tell the compiler to do i said this is my source code before you compile copy and paste the content of he ha dot who who and what is that the first part of my program and the syntax sucks. It's an absolute disaster. But then I'm going to say, add, copy and paste. This is this part. And that's the rest of my code. So together, these two includes would provide a proper code. And when I run the program, surprise, surprise, what you're going to see is this. Ta-da. Include is literally copy and paste. There is no adding. There Adding is good, actually. Uh, there is no linking. There is no calling. Nothing special is happening. You're just telling to the compiler, I want that piece of code before I compile. We good? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? So OK. So now we have that one. We are out of the way because uh, because I do, uh, and because I do over here, uh, let me just, well, that's going to be crazy. I'm just going to say over here, uh, what do I call it? Uh, crazy, inc uh, let's put A so we know A dash crazy include. Could it be any smaller than that? The, the resolution of this thing is like 5,000. Okay, crazy include dot uh, CPP. Okay, and I'm going to save it and I'm going to get rid of it because <laughs> that's, that, that's really bad. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and Let's go back to that. And by the way, those things don't even need to be in header files. I can remove them and it still works. It doesn't, header files, it's just, uh, remember, what you see over here, I cannot show it over here. What you see over here, <laughs> what you see over here, all these source files, is the headers over here, they are filters, built-in Visual Studio. Everything is in the root of your project. You know that, right? So. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that and put it in here, control V, and I'm just going to return zero just to have something in here so uh, we know we were actually teaching something. Are we good? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? 
we talked about what the heck we are doing in, uh, in, in, uh, um, in this subject. The thing was that we said first Earth got cold and then, uh, oh, sorry, made a mistake. First Big Bang, <laughs> 14 billion years later, Earth got cold, dinosaurs died, programmers came and start programming. They came with languages that did not make sense, very difficult to program with. They wrote programming languages for business. So like COBOL, have everybody ever heard of language called COBOL? Yeah, I don't, still it is running somewhere, I, believe me, but I don't think anybody that's knowing COBOL probably makes him making millions because nobody's <laughs> learning it and the old things are dying. So somebody needs to maintain it. But anyways, it was COBOL, it was, I think it was common business language thing. It was something like that. So it was written like, like literally when you were writing that program, it's like you're writing a letter to your mother. Like, please add A to B and then, so you would literally write like that. It was a crazy language. And then there was Fortran, formula translation, and to do math stuff. So it was like that. And then after that, they say, the heck with it, we're going to write languages that are multipurpose. What, why am I have to write some crazy stuff like this? So they, got, they came to new things. They created... They went a little too far. They created something like BASIC that nobody, nobody wants to do it anymore. They did Pascal, a good language, and Python, beautiful object-oriented language, things like that. But in um, uh, Bell, you know, the Bell thingy that you go, um, they created this language called B. B language was the language that was used in Bell laboratories for all the uh, communications that they had, and they had to have this versatile thingy. And they uh, made that program better, and they say, what do we call it now? Because that was B, let's call this one C. <laughs> so that became C language. So the C language then got, because the syntax was so simple to write, it was, you could quickly write code, and you didn't have, like in, pa in Pascal, you have to write a function, write begin at the beginning of the block, and write end at the end. It was crazy things. In here, it's written for lazy people who just want to program quickly. Okay, so you do curly brackets and things like that, and uh, 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 the language is very easy to write, and it has only 13 keywords. Uh, the rest is all functions. I know you're thinking 13, yes, it is. Like, like what statements, I mean, like for, if, what, else, uh, switch. When you think about it, you cannot even reach to 13. Try to count them, see if you can find how many verbs you have in the C language. Really, there's nothing. The rest of it are all functions that you're calling, right? So, yeah, so what happens is that they created that language, and the language became too complicated, because like they wrote operating systems like C language, the Linux operating system, things like that, Unix are all written in C. And it became too difficult, too crazy. They say we have to organize our thought. We talked about this before. We have to organize our thought uh, and make it easy for our brain to handle the complex things that we are writing. So what do we do? We try to simulate the real world inside our application. And then we thought about objects. We said every single thing is an object. It's easy for our brain to categorize things. And when you categorize different things into same category, those features of it are only uh, uh, con uh, are concerned. Again, I, I, I showed you, uh, I don't know if for this class or ZAA, I said a, a mug and a computer. What are these two things? Like, how can you categorize them in the same thing? People said different things, and they are both made of this, and they are, they are both. One of, who said they are objects? So, so <laughs> somebody said they are objects. So, I mean, it was actually a pretty cool answer for it. But anyways, like, and you can do that for everything. Like, I can have that mug and this Xerox machine. And I say they are both containers. This one contains paper. That one contains liquid. Okay? So, again, you can do stuff like that. And based on what you want to do to see if something is full or not as a container, it's actually worked really, like you can write a program to check to see if coffee mugs are empty or if this is running out of paper, if that's what your objective is. So you can actually classify things into proper stuff. So it is really an object-oriented world we are living in. When I say human, close your eyes, picture a human. Immediately you know what I'm talking about. Donkey, close your eyes, you know what I'm talking about. Chair, close your eyes. Each one of you is picturing different type of chair, but they're all chairs. 
you all, they, all of them you sit in. None of them is to beat somebody with. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're all sitting objects, sitting into objects, right? So it became an object-oriented thing. And then we said, for things to actually be objects, they need to be aware of the things they can do. An object is something that comes with its features. When I have a, a Xerox machine, its, its job is to copy things. It comes with it. If I told you this is a copier machine, what does it do? It honks horns. It doesn't make sense. If it's a copy machine, its job is to copy. This is a light bulb. What does it do? It makes a noise. No, that's not the case. It shows, it, it emits light, right? So <clears throat> every single thing that I have, when I say a bag, it's, it's to carry things. Now that bag can be that one or it can be your backpack. They're both bags. It's their job is to carry things around with you. So every single object come with its, capa with its capabilities. And then after those capabilities, every single object comes with its specification. If I told you that is a, 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 a what do I call it? How do I put these two in the same category? A coffee mug and a water bottle. I call them both something to sip for, I don't know, mugs, okay? One of them is insulated, the other one is not. So they have their specifications. One of them is to carry only room temperature or cold liquids, the other one can carry both. So they have their specifications. Although the job of the two is to carry liquid, but specifications differ. Do we understand this? And we said we're putting all these two things together makes things, encapsulate these two things together inside a, <clears throat> what we call a class. It's called encapsulation, to put these two things together. Every, everything comes with its specification. I'm a human being, right? I'm bald. She is not. So we are both human beings, but we have specifications. I have no hair. She does have hair. You follow what I'm saying? She has, I don't know what's the color of your eyes. Hazel? Brown? I'm, I, I think mine is brown too. Mine is dark brown, yours is light brown. Let's put it that way. So, so as you see, we both have eyes, but the color of the eyes are different. You, 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 you see what I'm saying, right? Each one comes with its own attributes. This is what we call an attribute. An attribute is the specification of an object that is important for you. If you categorize me as a teacher, what are you going to put for my attributes? What do I teach? How well do I teach? Is there anything else that is concerned for you as a teacher from, the, from an eye of a student? What do you want from your teacher? What does it teach? How well does it teach? How good they mark? How easy they mark? Right? So you put these things and what do you create out of it? RateMyProfessor.com. <laughs> right? Because that's what all that is important when you look at the attributes of a professor over there. Do you care if I salsa? No. Why do you, do you care if I can sing? No. Do you care if I'm bald? No. As long as I can do the things that I want you to do, I will be called a teacher. Are we clear on that? This, people, is called abstraction. To take what you want, leave everything else behind. And this doesn't just happen in object orientation. You were supposed to do that in C2. In C, when you wrote a function, you were, when you were designing an application, you had to think about that. But there is no place for me to tell you where to do abstraction. The whole thing was abstraction. But in here, in an object-oriented design, I tell you, when you think of an object, don't think about a program you're supposed to write. Think about an object, what that object is. That object is a waiter. If that object is a waiter that is supposed to be employed, first of all, a waiter is an employee, which means when I say waiter is an employee, you immediately know that the waiters are supposed to get paid, right? You immediately know the waiters are supposed to be paid because Waiter is an employee. Teacher is an employee. Correct? So teachers are getting paid too. A chauffeur. 
is an employee, correct? So anything that I say is an employee, I immediately bring another abstraction into another object. I can have an object called employee, and I tell you what is an employee. You gotta say an employee, that's name, employee number, and a salary that it accepts. That's my abstraction of it, right? Now I'm gonna say teacher is an employee. What happens? You bring that employee into a teacher. So first of all, you know teacher has a name, has an employee number, it has a salary that it's receiving, right? And then you add, if the teacher is teaching, what is it teaching, how good it is, and if it marks easy or not. You add it to that thing. So a teacher is an employee. This is called inheritance. This is something that we're going to do. So you not only encapsulate things, but also you encapsulate new things using an encapsulation you had before. So you don't have to reuse your silly stuff anymore. We did that in IPC 144 with functions, but that's messy. You are simply bringing routines inside. In here, I'm building entire new things. I'm going to say BMW is a vehicle, done, or is a car that is a vehicle. So when I say BMW, you know it's a car, which means it has wheels, it has steering wheel, it has, everything comes with it. So if I say Schmiggly Dinghy is a car, if I told you that Schmiggly Dinghy like BMW will have wheels, right? So everything comes with it. That's inheritance. Now, I'm going to tell you boat is a vehicle. Airplane is a vehicle. Vehicles carry passengers. Vehicles move, correct? Vehicles move. Are we okay with this? So a boat is a vehicle. An airplane is a vehicle. Correct? They both can move. If I told you a boat moves, do you think the boat's going to fly? No, it, no, you know it moves, but its movement is floating over the water, right? When I tell you an airplane moves, the movement of an airplane is flying into the air, correct? So you are inheriting stuff. The action inside a boat and an airplane are both moving. That is coming from its parent that is a vehicle, correct? But the actions are done differently. Movement of a boat is done differently. Movement of an airplane is done differently. I am a male human being. That's the tone of my voice. If I was a female human being, that would be my little high pitcher and more nice to hear, right? That was very awful demonstration, but <clears throat> anyways, it's, they have, you know, okay? So if I talk, the action of my talking will be with a low pitch where a female, by standard, most of female, they're, they are higher pitch, correct? So the action, not only that, if you talk to me as a human being, based on my nationality, when you say talk, Persian is going to jump out. When I tell her to talk, what's going to come out? Spanish is going to come out. We are both talking. You didn't tell me to speak in Persian. You told me to talk. The action of my talking generated Persian linguistic thingy, and hers is going to be Spanish. I'm going to say Shomari Yek, and she's going to say numero uno. So we're going to have different, so languages are, they are both talking, but in different things. Are we okay now with this? This is called polymorphism. Doing the same thing in different ways. Actions you take, that tells you what the action is. You know what the action is, but still you don't know how uh, the real outcome is going to be until you go to a better thing. That's called polymorphism. So polymorphism, so we covered three things. These three things, if you implement in your program, you have object orientation. Number one, if you encapsulate data and behavior together, Number two, if you use inheritance to reuse your code, 
You don't re-implement anything that is already implemented. Re you reuse that design. That's inheritance. Number three, you make sure that the actions that are done behave differently based on what you have underneath as descendants of an inherited thing. And you have an object-oriented program. The beauty of it is that you design your object, all the objects exactly as they exist in the real world, and you say, shoo, everything's going to work because they are working in real world. That's what the object orientation is. You don't have that complexity. When you design an employee to be an employee, to work, get salary, name, employee number, and you design a teacher to teach, all you need to, see, to say, I have two employees. One is a teacher, the other one is a waiter. I'm going to say, employees, work. The teacher is going to go teach, waiter is going to go wait, plumber is going to go do plumbing, Electrician is going to go do electricity. You don't need to think of what their works are. They're going to do their responsibility properly because they are polymorphic objects. That's the beauty of it. Got it? And that's what we're going to learn to do. Throughout the whole semester, we're going to work on inheritance, polymorphism, and what was the other one? Encapsulation. So we're going to do the, these, these things. And uh, and believe me, th you've got to do this right to the end of OP345. So there are many things to go through. It's a, so implementing these things, every object-oriented language has a tool to let you do that. And C++ is no difference, different. But C++ haters make a joke. So. I'll come to it in a second, OK? They say, they say C++, even the name has a bug. Because C is a C language, right? C++ is the language with one more feature, that is object orientation. That's why they call it C++. One feature is added to it, right? They say, your, the object orientation will not be added until the language is over because plus plus is coming after. You should have called it plus plus C. So they say even the name of the language has a bug. <laughs> okay. But uh, um, with those things come power. So just uh, that was a uh, nerdy joke. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I have another one coming up about that in, in C++ and you'll see. So um, the question is down to this point. Again, I'm going to give you sample stuff today. I'm going to write little bits of code here or there so you can see how things work. <clears throat> so polymorphism is not only the way that I told you. Even the same object can to do things in different ways. Um, for example, if I told you, like, if you are writing a, a program in C language, you have printf, correct? And in printf, you have to explain what to print and how to print, correct? In C++, I can write a print that I just say print, and it knows what to print based on what is passed to it. I can do that. OK? I'm going to demonstrate. Um, so things like that. Inheritance, I'm not going to show you. It's going to be halfway through the semester. But polymorphism and encapsulation, we're going to deal with it today. We're going to take a quick look at it, and then we're going to go step by step on it. Any questions down to this point? Suggestions? Objections? I need a break. All right. Uh, so which one you want us to do for, uh, for the example, employee or the, or the teacher? We're going we're gonna to do the teacher thingy, OK? So I'm going to show you. Um, some parts of how to start learning this object-oriented thing work with C syntax. Um, so if I want to have a teacher, we know by C language we say struct teacher, right? And we put all the specifications that we want for a teacher. The subject they teach, 
So how do we do with the subject? It's OOP two. So we did six uh, six characters, right? So what should I put over here? Character subject. And what do I put over here? Six or seven? Seven. Why do I put seven? Not at the end. Now, in C++, we have a universal way of initializing things. I go right from the beginning, and I'll tell you that, OK? Uh, it's aggregate initialization. But I'll, I'll, I right away, I tell you that. So anything you want to initialize, we have a universal way of doing it. Put an empty curly bracket in front of it. Close and open and close. That means set it to its default, to anything. Okay? So if I want that, if I if I want that to be an empty string, this is all I need to do. Whoa, what are the go? Not there, here. Done. And that works for everything. Okay, that means that subject, when I create a teacher, that subject will be empty. There's nothing in it. Nothing in characters is what? No. So all seven characters of that subject will be set to zero. Okay, we good? What is the next thing we need to have for the teacher? Subject it changes. What else? Okay, don't force me to come to you. Anybody's going to answer me? Name, name thank you. <laughs> Okay. As soon as I threaten people, everybody, hey, name, 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 name. Okay. <laughs> okay, so character name. Okay, and like the character, and somebody's name could be what, maximum 20 characters? So we put 41. Okay? <laughs> if you don't want it to fail. Because uh, for the subject, you know it's six. It cannot be seven. It's Seneca. We go with three this and three that, and all the subjects work that way. But names, we have. Lee Wen, and we have far that Sully Manlu. So you can never say what the name's going to go. Yeah, so, so that's that one. And if I want that name to be empty too, again, do it like that. <clears throat> what does the teacher, what, what else the teacher has? Huh? ID, you want an ID. So as a student, do you care what my employee ID is? <laughs> see? See what I just told you? Abstraction. Don't just tell whatever comes to your mind. Huh? You got me there. But, <laughs> but, but, but there's a question on ratemyprofessors.com. Do they care? No, because no, usually the teacher, the te if I have a teacher teaching OP244 with the same name of another teacher teaching OP244, then we're in trouble. But usually one of them is teaching psychology, the other one is teaching genetics. I don't know. So, so let's not go there. I'm not going to give it an idea. I don't want to go there. But what else? No, no. I, from your point of view. Overall rating. Overall rating. How well do they teach? So how do you want to demonstrate that? Like what you want to put? By what? Number. Number, an integer? What is that integer? So integer is going to be between? 1 to 5? Or 0 to 5? 0 to 5 it is. So that's good. So in here, although for that I can use a single character. Because what is a character? It's a small integer, right? There is no characters in C language. You know that, hopefully. We don't have anything called A. A is actually the number 65 inside an integer. We know that, right? So we could have done it, but I don't want to go that geeky. So I'm going to put an integer. Although that integer is now eight, six, or, uh, uh, four or eight bytes, that's like billion. But I'm just going to put an integer for the heck of it. So in here, I'm going to say int rating. OK? And again, I'll do the same thing. It means, by default, the guy's teaching very badly or the lady. OK? What else? Rating. How easy marking? OK, how, easy, so how good they grade, right? Grading. So we're going to go for that one. What are you going to do? Again, an int? Everybody's OK? No. So we decided that she's going to be the leader of this class, because anything she says goes, right? No, but really, anybody else? Like, nobody wants to go with 
Character going with A, B, C, no? Okay, sure, they don't. You're the lead. <laughs> okay. Again, I pick on people just to make you laugh. That's, there is no intention of putting anybody down or up, so please. All right, <clears throat> so uh, in here, I'm going to say int grading, right? And I do that again. So as you see, even in initialization, it's polymorphic. I put that one, that means set everything to zero. This one set everything to zero. This one set the integer to zero. That one set, so default this, default that, default that, default that. And whatever the meaning of default is, that's going to happen behind the scene. You see? You're, you're, you're going to get uh, to, the, to the thing, okay? So everything's good. So, uh, so far, so good. I have the teacher thingy created, and those are the things that I want. That's a little too much for, for ex making example. I would just put, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so that's fine. So, uh, <clears throat> so now, if I want to, so first of all, in C++, uh, when you are creating the teacher, because any opt, any thing that you create, structure that you create, is essentially an object. It's not a structure anymore. It used to be a structure. It was only data. But now we are encapsulating, right? Because of that fact, you don't need to say struct again to create an instance out of it. The teacher automatically becomes a type. So you can say teacher T. You don't need to say anything. So if I want to set the values of this teacher, what do I do? I write a function over here, say void set teacher, right? And in here, I'm going to say teacher pointer T, right? And obviously, I need a string header file over here. That's why I'm going to go include. Now, in C++, new C++, you don't have .hs anymore. Anything that comes from the old language, from C language that you are using, like string header file, you remove the H, and just to tell the compiler this is not your string, this is C's string, you put a C in front of it. So string.h becomes C string. Standard input output becomes CSDDIO. Standard library dot H becomes CSDDLIB. Okay? So you put a C in front of it. Not that we're going to use it, but strings we're going to use. So in here I'm going to go string, C string. That means the string from uh, standard <coughs> thing. <coughs> and I use it like this. So now in here I'm going to say, Plenty of time. Good. So I'm gonna. I want to set the teacher. So I'm gonna say str copy. I'm not gonna do any uh, uh, validation or set the teacher. Uh, and in here, I need to put the value. Sorry. So I need to put the constant character pointer for subject, constant character pointer for name, uh, uh, and integer rating, and integer grading. Now. One thing I have to, I, I'm going to start right off the bat. There is a naming convention that you have to follow. Because this is an object-oriented thing, and we want this variables inside a structure to be different, because variables inside the structure is not variables anymore. They are attributes, specifications of your object. Because of that, we want to call them member variables. So whenever you say a member variable, it means a variable inside a structure. Or let's learn the object-oriented name for it. It is an attribute. So when I say an attribute, what does it mean? A variable inside a structure. OK? And let's correct the structure name. A structure is essentially a class. So from now on, when I say a class, it can be a structure. Right? So my structure over there, I'm literally creating a class for the teacher now. Okay? So subject, and to just make sure that I'm not going to make a boo-boo, the naming convention for any member variable or an attribute is M underline subject. M on, it's not that the compiler is going to give you an error. That's the rule that you have to follow. Th I am trying to make you cope, learn, how you're going to join a company and start working as a programmer. They're going to give you a, 
a coding instruction this thick, you have to go through it and see how to name your variables. You write the best code in the world if your variables are not matching their style of coding. They reject your code and you're out of the company. You have to follow the rules exactly. Our rule says M underline at the beginning of every variable is required if the variable is an attribute. If so that's what we're going to do. And so I'm going to say SDR copy into T uh, name. Oh, rating, no, name. Name. Uh, I apologize. Um, I uh, am not very familiar, uh, very good with, with uh, 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 laptop keyboard. I, I, I need full size keyboard. <laughs> and this thing is not working for me. Anyway, so name, so that's the name uh, that is copied. Okay, SDR copy. Uh, SDR copy, T, and then we have, and I'm going to tell you another thing in a second, M subject, <clears throat> and I'm going to have over here subject, so the subject is copied. I'm not testing, I'm hoping that the, the subject is going to be the right size, I'm not going to do validations and stuff, okay? <clears throat> And the next thing I'm going to say, T that points to uh, rating will be set to rating, right? And then I'm going to say T that points to uh, grading will be set to grading. Are we okay with this problem? Down to this, but this is pure C. We are um, other than I didn't put a struct in front. <laughs> okay, so we are go okay, right? And if I want to actually show a teacher, display the specifications of a teacher, then what do I do? I'll go void, print teacher, right? And then in here I'm going to have <clears throat> constant teacher because I don't want to change the teacher. I just want to show it. And that's going to print the teacher, right? We okay with that? And we're going to use the insert thingy, so I'm going to say C out. Appreciate that C out is a polymorphic thing. I say insert to it, it knows what to insert. I don't need to say what. Okay? So in here, I'm going to say first show teacher's name, so T, M name. Then put a uh, insert uh, uh, a column. So what happens is that this operator that is printing the name, the result of it returns the C out itself. So the result the result of this one picks up the next one, and that one returns the next C out, next C out, and it keeps going like that. This is just an operator in C language. You learned, hopefully, that. Did anybody actually watch that thing that I told you to watch, the review of IPC 144? I didn't? Okay. Any operator returns a value in C language, and that value is something. When you are saying A plus B, if they are both integer, that plus returns an integer, right? If you are saying A plus B, A is a, an integer, B is a, B is a double, that plus returns a double, correct? So that's what it's so. This is an operator. It inserts the name into C out and returns C out. So C out picks up the next one. Then prints this one, returns C out, picks up the next one. So I can keep going like that. It's exactly like saying A plus B plus C plus D. No difference, right? So, <clears throat> and now in here I'm going to say uh, subject, the subject that wants to, they, they want to teach. So I'm going to say over here subject. <clears throat> I'm going to put it in parentheses. I'm just coming up with stuff over here. So T, and then in here I'm going to say uh, subject. Okay, that's what I want to do. And close the parentheses. And then I'm going to say, uh, um, I'm going to go to new line. And then I don't have to come to new line. I'm just, I'm just coming to new line because that's easier. So it says 
go to new line, and the result of that one is another C out, and I keep going, right? And I'm going to say uh, rating is uh, T M rating, right? And then I'll go to new line again. Then I go to new line again, so I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something that you're going to be happy that I'm actually making these mistakes that make you suffer. You're going to, you're going to see that there's a reason behind it. Okay, and the other one is grading, right? M grading. Okay, so that's going to print. So now in here I can create a teacher. So hello, OP244. I'm going to say teacher T, right? Okay, now I can say set teacher, address of T, and then in here I'm going to put subject is OP244, right? Uh, the name is Fred Soleil. It's not me. <laughs> uh, rating is four. Guy sucks, and but grades pretty well. Done. <laughs> okay. So then I'm gonna say <clears throat> print teacher, and I'm gonna put the address of T, and it's gonna print the teacher. So when I run the program, the program runs as follows. F10 runs the program. Oh, I have build arrows. Beautiful. The builder is probably for the, oh, you'll see. So it is because, oh, why is it? Oh, it, it went to the other one. What happened to my, what did I change? I, I changed the wrong file, people. Uh, I think I, I changed the crazy include. No. Where did I write this code? Don't t oh, here it is. Okay, it compiled the old one for some reason. So let me just do it one more time. Let me just compile it one more time and fix it. So uh, uh, controller five is gonna fail. No, and we need to add CRT secure Schmigli dinghy. You know that, right? So we have to say define this. Holy mother, it brought every, I just wanted to copy that. I never remember the spelling of the damn thing. Okay, so that's it. So now if I run the program one more time, three years later, it goes through it step by step. So I'm going to bring this at right, put the execution at left, give it some more space. I'm pressing F10. It says, hello, for, uh, creating teacher. I'll bring the thing over here. I look at the teacher. All the values are zero, as you see. Next time, everybody sit over there because the view of this one is not really good. Sorry about that. So that's that one. Let me just do like this and come at a little higher. <laughs> so there you go. So that's everything zero. Now I'm going to say set teacher. So it sets, I press F11. I go inside the, uh, the function, it copies the name, subject, rating, and everything comes down. I say print teacher, comes over here, prints the name and a subject, as you see, and prints the values and comes out. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? <clears throat> all right, but this is not object-oriented at all. What I was saying is that, so this one I'm gonna say, Alt F A, and I'm gonna call this one, uh, B, and I'm going to call it non-OO teacher. So that's a non-object-oriented teacher. Let's make it object-oriented, kind of. So <clears throat> isn't a teacher supposed to be able to set itself? Why do I have to pass a teacher to a function? Remember what I told you about me talking? I said, if you tell me far that talk, Far that's going to talk. You don't need to take me to some place so I get the be capable of talking. You have to go sit on that chair to be able to talk. That's not the case. Each person is capable of doing their own talking, right? 
teacher must be capable of doing its own setting. You should say T, set yourself, not passing T to another function. A function that is standalone is that hello in the night. Remember? I did that in class, right? Remember it was a scary thing? Set over here is not supposed to happen like that. <clears throat> I have to take this set and bring it inside teacher. Now, what's the good thing about this? The good thing about this is that the good thing about this is that <clears throat> because set teacher is inside the teacher, it have access to all the properties of the teacher. That's the nature of objects. I can touch my hand, head. I can do my ears like this. If I do it like that to him, he's going to slap me in the face because that's not my head. That's not my ears, right? Each person has access to its own properties. I can scratch my head. I can jump. I can do stuff, right? Each person can its own, do its own things, right? Clap, please. He clapped. Why? That was one lame type of clap. <laughs> clap. <laughs> Thank you. So he clapped. You see, so the, <clears throat> so the action of clapping came from him, not me. And I clapped, right? Same thing over here. So calling that function set teacher sucks. I shouldn't do that. It's set. I'm telling to teacher, set yourself. First of all, don't ever call a member function or a method with the name of its class. You are saying, teacher, set yourself. You don't need to say, teacher, set teacher. That doesn't make sense, right? It's like saying, Fardad, take Fardad to the washroom. You don't do that. Fardad, go to the washroom. That's how you do it, right? OK, it's the same thing. So, and also, set has access to everything of teacher. I don't need this. And these T, T, me stuff are not needed over here. Because set knows where is its name. Set knows where is its subject. Set knows where is its rating. Set knows where is its grading. You don't need those things. Same thing for printing. Why do I say print teacher? I don't do that. I put it inside the teacher. And I'm not going to say print teacher anymore. I'm just going to say print. And I don't even need to pass anything to it. You see this const over here? I'm going to fix that too. So in here, I simply say nothing. I don't need to say anything. I, because I'm telling to the teacher to print yourself. The teacher knows what is its name. The teacher knows which subject is teaching. The teacher knows what is its rating. And the teacher knows what is its grading. None of those are needed. And therefore, I don't have this ugly thing over here anymore. All I need to do is to say t.set. t, set yourself. t, print yourself. And the action is the same. First step, encapsulation, putting the data and behavior together. Now, I can have two teachers. And I can say over here, <clears throat> u dot set, what, uh, IPC144, Fardid, Solai. And that was an actually a good teacher. But it's very hard graded. OK? And then I'm going to say u.print. So as you see, u prints itself. We good? Right? So now if I run the program, <clears throat> when, huh? new feature, 11? OK. Uh, OK. I can live with that. So it comes over here. I cannot see. If I can, you should come and see who has designed this the keyboard. When you stand over here, you don't see anything. Uh, I cannot see which bottom is what, seriously. Um, OK, that's F10. OK, so F10, I'll, come, I'll get in here. 
so they are both created as you see T is all empty and U is all empty. Each one has its own properties. When I say T set yourself, it goes to here. Now subject is, will be set to, uh, sorry, name will be Fred Soleil, subject will be OP244, rating will be set and everything and comes out. I should have brought the print down here. Let me just do that. One of the good things about uh, the, the new capabilities of these IDE, when I say new, I mean last 10 years, very old I am, okay, is that you, you can actually change the code on the fly and it recompiles and reapplies it if you didn't do too much of a change. Hopefully this was one of those scenarios. So um, F10, F11, oh, it <laughs> okay, let's run it again. So <clears throat> F10, I'm going to come over here. So it set the first one, we saw that. Setting the second one, it's going to come over here. Now it's going to call the same set, but this time the teacher is Fardit Solai, right? And it's teaching IPC 144, rating stuff are set. So when I say T print yourself, that's Fred Soleil. When I say you print yourself, that's the other guy. So as you see, each object knows its own property. I don't need to pass them around to different functions. They know what they are supposed to do. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Okay, good. Okay, so now, <clears throat> next thing. Let me save this. C semi O O teacher. Dot C P O. As you see, I keep the, the old ones, so when you look at the notes, you see what the progress of everything was. Problem over here is that. <coughs> Time, 52. Who's my next victim? Let's say this gentleman and I are standing in Tim Horton's lineup. And I'm his teacher, right? So he needs me. I have to give him good marks and stuff, right? So we are getting to the lineup. And he's behind me. I want to get the, the, the thing. And I do, oh my god, I didn't bring money. I say. Can I borrow a couple of dollars to get coffee? He's going to give me $2. Is Tim Hortons $2 or is it more expensive? Anyway, it's more expensive? Seriously? Oh, $3. <laughs> so, so, I, so he's going to give me $3. I'm his teacher. He wants to please me, right? I get the coffee, and I get out, and he gets it. We come friendly. Hey, thank you very much. I'll give you your $3 tomorrow. Life is good, right? Let's rewind. I'm standing in Tim Hortons. I'm a teacher. He's my student. And I see, oh, I don't have money. So what I do, I take my hand, put it in his pocket, look for $3, and take the $3 out and buy my coffee. Will the outcome of the program be any different? Probably a slap in the face, right? <laughs> Or even if he doesn't notice, it's an invasion of privacy, correct? That should not happen. If you want money from someone, you should ask the object. The object is supposed to reach for its thing. Maybe the lending money function of that one has a limit. If lending is more than 10, say no. If less than 10, say yes. If the person who's asking is a teacher, yes. If the person who's so you have all those validations instead. I don't know about those validations. I ask, can I have three bucks? The function gets called, and he does all the checks, and the reply comes out based on who's asking, right? So he can do all those stuff. So in here, the problem is that in this main, I can write this thing now. I can say, oh, they say I'm a bad teacher, t dot, or I'm not a, what, what was the first one is t, uh, t dot set, t, what is the, fa this one, is it, um, what is the first set? Um, ta -ta -ta. 
It's grading? Rating. So, uh, yeah, so they say I'm a bad teacher. I'm going to say, no, I'm not, and I'm going to change it. So I'm going to say over here, M, uh, was it rating? And I'm going to set it to 10. And when I run the program, you will see that my rating is now 10. I shouldn't be able to do that. If I'm setting, it has to be done through set, not to fiddling inside the thing's guts and change it, right? So those attributes should not be accessible. I can do that. How do I do it? I'll go over here, and I write over here, private. It means don't touch these. If you want to change them, you have to ask me. In here, I'm going to say public. Now, the compiler is going to say, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> and, it's, and if I compile and run, it's going to tell me, teacher M rating is not accessible. Got it? All right. So now I can actually apply privacy to my class. Ta-da! That is now an object-oriented thing kind of a thing, closer. Okay? So if you want to change, if I want to change only the, uh, uh, say, uh, let's say you cannot change, you cannot change anybody's name, right? Name is the name, it remains the same, but you may want to change the subject, correct? I can do that. I can actually say, you want to change the subject? Sure, I'm going to do it. What do I do? I'm going to say void set constant character pointer subject. What the heck just happened? I should get an error. I have two functions with the same name. No, it's C++, it's polymorphic. It's going to recognize when you pass only one character that the set is this set, not the other one. You are not doing two different things. In here, I'm going to say str copy into uh, m, uh, what is that? Uh, subject, the subject. So now I can actually come to my code and in here I can say t.set to op345 and then t.print. One set, another set. The proper one is picked automatically. So I run it. And as you see now, it's teaching 3, 4, 5. Got it? Yes. Ah, then we can't do it. Then you have to write its set name. So you have a limit to that. So it cannot do magic, but it cannot do magic, but up to a certain point it can go through that. Some people say you should not make set polymorphic because when you say set and you only put a string over here, how does a programmer know what are you changing? It was just an example. This is an awful design, right? So I say, this is an awful design, and she says, yes, yes. <laughs> So this is an awful design, but it's just an example, right? Like, if that's why I was begging you to give me something else for the rating. Everybody, you gave them both integers. If one of them was integer, the other one was character, then I could write a set, and put one character and the other one integer, so you know the, the right one was picked, but it couldn't go there. Okay, so that's that. So you see how it works, right? So that's, this is like a very lame and cheesy way of teaching you what encapsulation is and what polymorphism is. But that's what it is. You are using polymorphism every single C out that you're using, every single C in that you're using. And that's how it works. Are we OK then at this point? Are we OK? And we can actually have another set. This is actually a better set. I can have another set like this. And I'm going to end this thing with that. So in here, I'm going to have another set. I'm going to say void. 
set, and I'm not going to give it anything. So when you don't tell it anything and you say set, it means ask the user. So now I can actually do, what do I do? I can go, the prop, there's going to be a problem with the name, but I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to do it. So well, you, I'll, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to set over here. I'm going to say C out. In here, I'm going to say name. Uh, I'm going to make it easy. So in here, I'm going to say character name. Name was 41. And the other one was is what? Uh, um, name and subject was seven, and we had rating, uh, oh, sorry, rating was integer, so we had uh, integer rating, and the other one was grading, right? So, and I'm gonna set everything to, to empty. The reason I'm doing this is that this is called buffering. I don't directly put it in the name. Why? Because if you ever want to do validation, if they do something wrong with the name, you don't want a half build up class. The name is set, but it's not. If, you, if something goes wrong halfway through, you completely terminate, say, hey, you did it wrong, do it again. So they have to start everything from the beginning. So you buffer all the information in the function, and you set them where everything goes good. I'm not doing validation but I'm still doing it out of habit. So in here, I'm going to say C out name. Then I'm going to receive the name over here. So I'm going to say C in name, which means receive the name. Then I'm going to say C out subject. Then I'm going to receive, actually, let's, uh, let me do it with the, the, the way I, that I usually do. So this one is, is subject. When I was telling you all these mistakes that I make, they're actually good. I'll tell you why. I, I, have, uh, I, have, I have studied a lot about doing live coding classes, good or not. Bringing already done code. This is easy. I could do it at home two seconds. I brought it up. This does that. This does this. The fact that I am doing this, and you're like, God damn it, type that right. And you're looking and expecting the damn thing to be written properly, submits it to your memory. OK? So I, 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 with that, I force myself to slow down, not to go quickly. I could have just brought out slides and say, this is that, that is that. Let's go to the next one. And none of you would have like really see what I did, what I've done, right? But like this, you really actually are, like you're expecting me to type the damn thing and then you're, yes, you, so you learn out of that. So, so in here I'm gonna say C out, after subject I have uh, rating, new line and, uh, and I'm, this laptop is, as I told you, it's new, so, so uh, I, 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 I'm getting used to its keyboard, so m bear with me. Rating and see out subject uh, grading. So, and then after that, I'm going to go see in grading. And in here, I would have had some if statement if everything is good. Then I would say over here, set to name subject. Is it subject name or name subject? Anybody remembers? So actually, I can look at it over here. It's subject name. So it's subject name rating and grading. And I set it right after. So now if I actually did I miss anything? Okay, give me line number, please. 24. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't nullify. Okay, so that's that. So now, in here, I can actually say u.set. 
And as you see, when I say u dot set, it shows me three sets, three different functions. So it, it knows that I have three different overloads. This is called function overloading. Okay, when you have a function with the same name and different arguments, I'm overloading the functions, and I'm going to say u dot print, and I'm printing everything. So if I run the program now. So now it's going to actually call the last one. So it says name over here. I'm going to say Jack. Jack. I'm not going to put a last name because CN has space as a delimiter. If I put a space, it only picks up Jack, and the rest of it will go to the next one. We're going to learn how to fix that later. Jack uh, and subject, I'm going to put uh, uh, EAC150. And rating, it's going to be 7. And gradient is going to be 9. And as you see now, it says Jack subject, yada, yada, yada. We got that? So quickly, I went through an example of encapsulation uh, and a little bit of polymorphism in here. That was it. OK? So we're going to start OP244 soon. OK? So uh, you, like, Look at all the things that we have, uh, and I and I told you that I'm going to actually talk about the the uh, the first workshop. Um, so the first workshop you have, the first workshop you have is going to be something like this. That's workshop one. So the very first thing you're going to do will be modules, which essentially I give you a piece of code. Um, submission stuff are mentioned over here. I don't want to go through that. So I'll give you a piece of code. Uh, and this code, that is w1p1.cpp, it is a program that works like this. So essentially, uh, it's a sampler program. You say, how many samples do you have? So you put one, you set the samples. So you, I put three. Uh, so I put wrong. So it says you have to first put the samples and shows the menu. Now I'm going to say one, enter samples. I'm going to say three samples I have. Then it's going to, uh, then I'm going to say enter samples. Then it's going to ask you for each sample. So 20, 50, 100. Then it's going to show a graph of those samples when you print it. So it shows a graph like that for samples. So I call it Senegraph. It could be used for anything, right? So you get the code for this, fully functional. You put it in modules. So you create a header file and a CPP file for each of them, each module that is related to each other. And you set them all together, and that becomes, uh, becomes part one. Yeah, you can do it in 10, 15 minutes. I'll go through the details quickly right now. But the second part, that is DIY, you have to do it yourself, which means in the DIY part, what you do is this. That's lab. So it's saying step three, do this. So I, I'm going through all different things how everything is done, so it explains exactly. So it says you have to have an I.O. module, a graph module, and a main module. I.O. has a CPP and a dot .h. Graph has a CPP and a dot .h. Put the functions, print, digit, yada, yada, yada. I'm, I'm saying what the function. Put these functions in I.O. module and prototypes in a header file. Put these functions in a graph module and prototypes in a header file and compile the three uh, Things, so you're going to have a program running. It's complete C. Uh, not C. It's C++ using C in and C out, but it is uh, uh, all functions. There is no uh, classes or anything like that. It's as if you are writing C program, but using C in and C out. Okay? And then after that, for DIY, what you're doing is this. So that's the data entry for submission. For DIY, you have a student mark. Structure like that, again, no object orientation. And you have a data file, a comma-separated value data file that holds the name, surname, and the mark that the student received. That module is written for you. So you have the file function, and you just have to use it. The source code for the module are there, so you know exactly what it is. 
and it's the tester for it. So you, the file module is fully written. You have to just use it. Um, then what you need to do, you have, uh, you bring the I.O. and graph from the lab section to here. Those are written for you too, so you bring it over here. You complete the ST mark, student mark module. In that one, I want one print report function to be written that receives a file name using my file module. It will read all the data in an array of structures. You have a sample in the tester of that one. You see how it's done. So you read, you read everything into the, uh, into the structure array. So that all the data comes into the structure. Then comes your coding. So what you need to do is to change the graph that shows 10 samples like this and shows these numbers at the beginning. So these are all the numbers between 90 and 100. These are all the numbers between 80 and 90 and shows the graph like that. And what it does, it reads all the file and counts how many numbers are between 91 and 100. Passes that one to the sample. How many numbers, so you go through the whole thing, you write a loop, you see which one's marks are between 91 and 100, that goes to the first sample. You have an array of 10 samples. And then you can't go through it again, 81 and 90. So you find exactly what they are, you call this one. My tester only uses one function in here. So if you look at main.cpp, that's what it does. So my tester does this. It says, give me a file name. It receives a file name, passes it to print, file, uh, print report, and that's going to print the report. How you are going to implement it in DIY, your responsibility. Write as many functions as you want or one function. I strongly suggest don't just write one function. Break it down into pieces. Uh, we want to see how you came out of the IPC 144. You are just completing this with few functions to go through the simple data thingy. So the data is read for you in a thing. You have to write functions that finds out how many samples are there and m hack the graph, dot, uh, graph function to add labels in front of the things. That's an easy thing. And all the functions are all there for you. So that's uh, the DIY section. And that's your workshop one, OK? So uh, you will see it soon. And when it comes up, you're going to ask questions. I'm going to go through it. I'm, I'm just putting it up there so the profs see it. And that's the only workshop that I have designed this semester. And I did it just last night, OK? So the rest of it are all uh, from other profs. So you'll see that. Um, questions? It's going to be posted on Friday. It's going to, so our lab is, is, uh, was when? Uh, lab was on? Oh, the, so this, oh, so which day is it? So it's the, so the due date's going to be, uh, I think, three days after the, the lab is uh, the lab due, and uh, two days after that is DIY or the other way. So Friday it's done. You have plenty of time to. So it depends that the due date of each lab depends on each section's lab session. So you got to have one week after the six days after your lab to complete the whole thing. And it's released the Friday before. So do the math. OK? So if at you procrastinate on one of them, you, everything is uh, screwed up. Don't do that. Don't procrastinate. As soon as it comes up, Try to do it, see how it's done. So when you come to lab, you come with questions. You're telling me for that, I try to do this, this doesn't work, so I can help you right over here. Obviously, you can always call me on Teams. There is no problem with that. The rule of green or yellow. Or book an appointment, one of these, OK? Uh, so that's that. It's not posted yet. It will be posted. So today and tomorrow, other profs are going to take a look at it, see if, if I made any ginormous boo-boo. If not, then I'm going to put it up and uh, set up the submission scripts. OK, so.
Uh, I'm going to pause this.